Hello, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Films and this is my review of six vest style running packs, around 10 litres in size and suitable for long runs, ultras and multi-day races. So those of you who have been following my channel for the last couple of months will know that I've been testing out these six backpacks to find out which one I'm going to take with me on the Cape Wrath Ultra this May. So the Cape Wrath Ultra is a 250 mile 8 day race across the Scottish Highlands. I'm really excited and also terrified in equal measures. So I thought that I'd test out a load of backpacks to see which one would fit all of my mandatory kit and that I would take with me. And now, you might think that a backpack is a backpack. Well, this test just shows that there is so much choice out there, and quite frankly, it's bewildering. So hopefully, this roundup is going to help you choose the best pack for your needs. If you'd like to buy any of the gear that you see in my gear reviews, I always post the links to them in the description below. And if you click on those links, then you'll help me out by giving me a percentage of the sale, and that's at no cost to you or the brand. So thank you very much if you go down that road. So let's start with the one that I liked the least. I'm really sorry, Innovate. I know Innovate make cracking shoes, they make cracking clothing, but I would not recommend this backpack to anybody. It's the Innovate Race Elite 10. It costs 90 pounds and it's 382 grams, including two 500 milliliter bottles. Um, it just comes in one size and I'll just put it on now because the thing that I really didn't like about this pack was the pockets. And to me, pockets on the front are the whole point of having a vest style running pack rather than a backpack where it all goes in the back. So these pockets here, you can only just get two fingers into. And so you could fit a gel in there, maybe, or a bar, but they're really hard to get anything in and out of, um, especially if you like to take normal food with you. So that's one reason why I wouldn't recommend this pack. The second reason is that the bottles that they've chosen to use are hard bottles rather than soft bottles, which most other packs will use. And once you've drunken out of this bottle, it'll slowly just collapse and you won't have a bottle digging into you. So these aren't as comfortable as soft bottles, in my opinion. You also have to take them out when you want to drink or on the move. Um, so with the soft bottles, a lot of them are placed here on the pack, so you just have to tip your head downwards and take a drink that way. It's far easier than taking it out and then trying to get it back in one-handed, which is just... I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've been running for about 30 miles, every piece of energy counts and you want to save every last drop of it. So the final reason why I wouldn't recommend the Innovate Race Elite 10 is that I prefer a top opening to the main compartment. I have had packs where if your shoulders are quite stretchy, then you can unzip the top of the pack and actually stuff something in or pull something out, usually a windproof or a waterproof, um, without even stopping. However, on a pack like this one, the zip is in the center. So you pull it all the way down and you've got access there. So there's no way that you could reach over the shoulder and access anything while you're on the move with a pack where the zip is designed like this. So for those three reasons, I'm not going to use this on the Cape Wrath Ultra and I wouldn't actually recommend this pack to anyone. If you had never used a vest style pack before, then this would come as a complete revelation and you'd be, you'd be thrilled. But there are just better packs out there, so I would not buy the Innovate Race Elite 10. Next up is the OM Trail Fire and Compressor Pod. So this is a really interesting backpack because it's actually two components in one. You've got the Trail Fire Vest, which is this purple and grey thing here, and then you've got the OM Compressor Pod, which bungees and velcros on to the Trail Fire Vest. So the vest is £55, it's 5 litres in capacity and it weighs 125 grams. The compressor pod that you can buy separately for £28 is also 5 litres of storage space and it weighs 60 grams. So that is a super light vest. 
You also need to buy a couple of bottles. Um, these ones with the long straw on here are 330 milliliter bottles and they're £13.50 each. So if you put that all together, you're looking at a total of £110, which puts it in the same region as a lot of the other packs here. So um, the reason that I'm not going to be taking this pack with me on the Cape Wrath Ultra is because it's just a little bit small for all the mandatory kit that is required. Um, also, if you put any significant weight into the compressor pod, it tends to bob up and down because it's only secured with bungee and with the Velcro. Um, also, I find the water pockets are a bit too small, so they fit the bottles they have got a straw, which is a really nice touch, so you don't have to bend down too far. But that 350 millilitres isn't a lot of water. I would like to take 500 millilitres each side. I don't know if I'll need that much on the race or any race, but it's just nice to have that option and the size as well. So those are the reasons that I wouldn't be taking the OM Trail Fire and Compressor Pod with me on the Cape Wrath Ultra but it would be a good pack for shorter runs where you weren't carrying as much kit. Next up, we have the Ultimate Direction Adventure Vesta. This costs £150 retail price and it's 302 grams for the extra small slash small ladies size. And it's 12.4 litres total storage. So I was really excited by this pack when it first came out. This is new for 2018 and I was really enjoying wearing it. Um, it's got a really intriguing contraption in the back panel whereby you pull down this cord here and that cinches in the back panel there. You can do it on both sides and it really fits really well on your back. But these bits here, they start to curl in and they start to just jab into your back over any significant mileage. So you can see there, I've actually worn it down to I've worn the hem off that, so that's been digging in and it's quite uncomfortable. So I just think less is more when it comes to pack design sometimes. <laughs> so I'm definitely not going to choose this pack for the Cape Wrath Ultra for that reason alone. There's great storage in the back compartment and this is one of the packs where I can um, reach behind my shoulder and unzip the main compartment, the hydration bladder compartment actually, and I can actually stuff a waterproof or a windproof down the back into the main compartment or into the hydration compartment there um, while I'm still running. So that is a brilliant, brilliant feature and I really like that. But the other reason that I'm not going to take this pack on the Cape Wrath Ultra is because I just can't get into the side pockets. I really can't. I, I really like the design of the pack, apart from the things that are jabbing into me at the back. Um, this pocket is great because it's really stretchy, you can really get your hand in there, you can get out, you can put in whatever you like, hats, gloves, food, whatever type of food, a banana, anything in there. This one, is it's got a zip across it, but that means that you can't get much of your hand in there. And it's not stretchy at all either, so you can't, you just can't really use it. When the pack's full and really, really tight around you, you just can't use those pockets like you can on other packs. There's also a pocket here as well. Um, that's quite hard to access, um, and, but it's also quite hard to find, especially when the pack is really tight around you. There sort of needs to be, ah, oh, there is a little, there's a bit of a bungee here so you can sort of feel it, but I feel like this pocket needs to be cut a little bit lower so that you can find and locate that pocket a lot easier. They're the two reasons why I'm not going to be taking this pack with me on the Cape Wrath Ultra. The next pack that I was considering is the Salomon S-Lab Sense Ultra 8 set. It costs £140 and it's an amazingly light 205 grams for the smallest pack in the range, which is this one, the extra small. So I'm, I said it's the smallest pack in the range, but in my opinion, Salomon should definitely make at least one size smaller than this. So I know it's an extra small, but it's still a little bit on the large side. So it sort of gapes around the shoulder area just here, um, and a little bit around here as well. 
but I love the pockets on this pack. Salomon do the best pockets. You've got a water bottle pocket, you've then got a stretchy pocket around the water bottle pocket as well, which is great for food. You've got a side pocket here with a zip on, which is easy to undo and get done up again on the move. And you've got a pocket just around the back here, which if you're quite stretchy of the arm area, you can actually reach that pocket without stopping. And and again, the pocket around the back as well. I can chuck stuff in here without stopping because you just jam it in. The downside of that main compartment pocket being uh, so easily accessible is that if, you're, if you want to put a lot in this pack, this pack's around eight liters capacity, then you'll find that especially if you're putting things in dry bags because you're going to a wet place, Britain's got a wet climate, then you'll find that things start to slowly slide their way out. And I've had arms of windproofs and waterproofs slowly trailing down my back and it's just been a good job that I've noticed them so they haven't fallen out altogether. So for th I would put um, a bungee closure on the main compartment so that you could, um, you could open it on the move and then just secure it with that bungee afterwards. That's what I would do to this pack, but I'm not going to take this one on the Cape Wrath Ultra because at eight liters in size, it's just that little bit too small to fit all the mandatory kit, but this is one of my preferred packs to use when you've got shorter days and less kit to carry. And obviously I would like them also to make an extra, extra small. Next up we've got the Montane Jaws 10. It's 115 pounds and it weighs 357 grams for the small medium size. Um, so this is 10 litre capacity and um, this pack is so comfortable. The moment I put it on it was really comfortable um, but I would say that they need to make a s one size smaller. It's unisex but I don't think that there's any problems with me wearing it as a woman. I don't think that I need any difference in the design. Um, I would just say that it would be nice to have a slightly smaller size and extra small because when I've got this pack on and I'm, I've got it full and I'm running, then I do have to have this really, really on its, on its tightest setting. So the other thing that I would really like this pack to have would be another pocket under the water pocket. So these are the water bottle pockets here and here, and on the salmon pack, you also have a pocket that starts about here and you can put more food in. So here, they're missing a trick not having a pocket here. I would love to see a pocket here. Um, I was a bit dubious about the bottles being all the way down here because you can't just dip your head and drink. But I was talking to somebody else in the Wild Ginger Gear Test Club and she said that she actually prefers that because she's quite big on top. So if she has water bottles here as well, then just, that just makes her really top heavy and she actually finds them more comfortable here. So that's a, just a matter of personal opinion. The pockets around the side are really good because they've got this sort of a scoop design so that you can find where the pocket is on the move. The only thing about the back compartment, the back compartment is great, there's two pockets there, but I would really like a top closure so that I could do what I did with the Ultimate Direction Pack and actually unzip the top compartment, stuff something in or get something out on the move. I also really like the bungee at the back of this pack because I was putting hat and gloves and buff in here when I was getting hot up the hill and then when I got to the top of the hill I was just taking it from behind my back and I was just putting my gloves and hat and buff back on just secured in this bungee here so that was really super useful so I really love this pack actually just need one size smaller for the smaller ladies and I would love to just see a pocket here and a pocket here for more food so finally, this is the sixth pack and this is the actual pack that I'm going to take with me on the Cape Wrath Ultra next week. So this is the Raid Light Responsive 10. It's £130 and it weighs 375 grams for a small. Um, I did try the extra small to start with based on all the other packs I'd used being too big and actually the extra small came up small so that's a massive plus point. This is really really great for smaller people. The pockets on this pack are really good. They've got water bottle pockets just here. Uh, they've got huge food pockets just here which you can access whilst the water bottles are full. And then you've got 
um, a pocket here which you can maybe just about access if you haven't got too much um, in your bag um, but I can't really access that one in the move. It would be great to have some bungee cord across the back there just like the Montaigne bag. Um, they've got a side cinch here, it's called a free lock dial so you tighten it up like that and then you turn it backwards once and then that loosens the whole thing and you can un undo that. I would prefer to have an extra side pocket rather than this dial. I just think that it doesn't make a lot of difference on me to tighten it in. I'd probably just just as easily be wearing it with the with it pulled straight out when I've got it loaded full of stuff. It's probably going to fit just right. So I'm just a massive fan of a side pocket just here. It's really easy to access just here. So that's what I'd want to see here as well. And also the cinching wire here. I just think is that going to snag on something when I go past like brambles or tree branches? That's just another area that could snag there. It's also, this pack is the only pack which holds poles in a really unique way. I'll just show you. So, got some poles here. What you do is put them through here, and then through here. And you run with them a bit like a dog with a stick in its mouth. When I first, when I first ran along with this, I thought to myself, am I gonna, like, you know where you see those dogs with the huge sticks and they can't get through a stile or a door? I just thought, am I going to just be running through somewhere and just be like, boom, hit something and uh, fall over backwards? But, but no, the poles are only the length of my shoulder, so I won't be bumping into anything. It just feels really funny to have the poles here, but actually it's very comfortable and um, I think that's fantastic. So seeing as I am going to be using poles on the Cape Breath Ultra because it's such a long race and I've got a bit of a foot injury at the moment, then this pack is absolutely fantastic. It, I'll just show you the back compartment as well. So the back compartment fits about 10 litres worth of gear and like the Salomon pack, it is just open, there's no closure on there so I will be using a dry bag inside of that. But the opening is so much smaller than the Salomon pack. And it's also got these clips here that you can do up just to just to tighten the pack a little bit. And I would also take these and I would uh, clip them together with a little carabiner or something like that just to doubly make sure that nothing is going to come out of that opening there. The only real downside to this pack um, I found was the water bottles. So they are 600 millilitres rather than 500 millilitres, which is what most of the other packs have gone for. And when they're totally full, they are really hard to get into these pockets. So I'm probably just going to slide these Salomon bottles in because the Salomon bottles have got this sort of rocket shaped end to them. So they will just slide into pockets really easily. So I think I'm going to use a bit of a cocktail of the Raid Light Pack and the Salomon bottles to do the Cape Breath Ultra. So that's what I'm going to take. But this is by far not the most perfect backpack. So if I was to create the perfect backpack, this pack would have some bungee just here so that I could reach for my gloves and hat and buff on the move. And it would also, I would just do away with this cinch in system and I'd put a compression strap there and I'd have a pocket as well. I would put slightly smaller bottles in it and I don't really think that I need these long tubes either because they're so close to your head, you can just reach down and drink on the move quite easily. So that's my review of the six backpacks that I could have potentially taken on the Cape Bath Ultra. So what's your backpack of choice at the moment? Do you like a more backpack style? Do you like a vest, a race vest? Let me know in the comments below and if these reviews have helped you in any way, please press like and click subscribe as well, it's totally free. And don't miss out on any of the other films that I've got on this channel. I've got other gear reviews, I'm starting to work through shoes now, I'll be putting more videos on about my kit for the Cape Breath Ultra and I've got interviews with elite athletes, I've got one with Scott Jurek coming up which I'm really excited about and there's race recce's on there and nutrition tests as well. I hope you enjoyed that review and I will see you out there on the trails wearing one of these.